This is Philip Ward, Editor-in-Chief, Aunt Mini Europe at ECR 2018. You've had the informatics perspective from Professor Neeson. You've heard about the health management aspects of AI from Professor Morozov. Now we have a radiologist perspective, Dr. Eric Ranshard. Eric, everyone says that, image that AI is about image analysis. Do you think this is actually the true, for, or, or is the more involved in AI for radiologists? Well, it's, it's very true what you're saying. The most you read about artificial intelligence in radiology is uh, about uh, the way uh, artificial intelligence is analyzing images, and maybe even better than radiologists. But as a matter of fact, uh, artificial intelligence can be used for many other things as well, uh, especially, for example, to reduce uh, the um, radiation of patients. Uh, for example, the imaging protocols can be optimized for the patient, uh, depending on the size of the patient and uh, uh, the length and the age, etc., the type of examination. All these things can be analyzed on beforehand, before the patient gets on the table, and then the scan is made, optimized for the patient. That's one example. Another one is um, the MRI sequences, which can be shortened. For example, uh, data can be, uh, the number of data that is assembled can be reduced, mm -hmm. and the better, there's images that can be reconstructed more efficiently and, and faster, so the time uh, the timing of the scanning will be improved, the, re the waiting times will be shortened. Um, that's another example. Uh, low-dose scans, for example, with CT, uh, the, the images that are being generated by low-dose scans are really pretty rough, but with artificial intelligence, the quality of the images can be improved, okay. so which Excellent. means that the, uh, uh, systematically the, the dose can be reduced for patients. Those are uh, three examples uh, in the field of imaging. Good. Um, so uh, to, to take on that dose issue, are there al algorithms out there that people can use, that people can adapt? Uh, have, alg have algorithms been approved? Is the software there specifically on dose? Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's already... Yes, some software is already available. Some vendors are promoting it now. There's research being done, for example, at the University of Utrecht. They're doing work with that. It's even possible to reconstruct uh, CT images from MR images. So uh, this is a, an inter interesting development because this way redundant examinations can be avoided, etc. So there's a lot of research, research going on in this field, but I know these uh, ideas are being uh, used and tested and uh, they will uh, have, find an application okay. in, in daily work. Good, but one of the problems I think is, um, is probably the lack of reliable data. Um, and that's holding back AI. Would you say that's, that's the main obstacle at the moment? Well, this is, of course, this is uh, applicable for the uh, artificial intelligence when it's used for image analysis. And yes, this is one of the uh, key issues. Um, the standardization of the way examinations are being done, that's one. Examinations should be, uh, the annotations should be made, the images should be classified. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, do we need man force to annotate images correctly? Uh, will we use reports, but there's no structured reports to, fit sh to, to match the images with the reports at this moment? So these are all issues that need, need to be overcome. And uh, in my view, um, a major issue is the, uh, the ecosystem. Uh, Keith Dreyer has been uh, talking about this at the RSNA, mm -hmm. and it's very important. There needs to be a framework in which the whole development of applications for artificial intelligence is, uh, fits in, in the, should fit in a framework, which means not only the data that should be prepared and made available, the way these data should be used for research, uh, the way the uh, new developed applications should be validated, the way sh they should be integrated, uh, the way the, uh, they should be approved, the way the updates should be approved, etc. This whole framework, this ecosystem, which is a nice word, I think, this is something which is lacking, and okay. they're working on this at this moment. Excellent. But I think this, this is certainly uh, something to uh, uh, keep an eye on. Good, so lots happening, lots, lots yes. developing. Yes. Um, some radiologists, though, feel threatened. They think that computers will replace mm -hmm working yes. clinical radiologists. What would you say to reassure those people? Well, mainly it's not radiologists saying this, it's other people saying this. <laughs> um, and as far as radiologists is concerned, um, I, I think they don't have to worry. But my idea is that radiologists who will not use artificial intelligence will 
probably disappear or will lose it. So if you want to win or stay, uh, let's say, uh, radiologist and keep radiologists high as a profession, you should embrace it. Okay. And so I see artificial intelligence as a co-pilot or a co-radiologist that is helping me. You know, a fact is that the workload is increasing, yeah. and so we need help and assistance to do this efficiently. Furthermore, we, got, we get a lot more data nowadays. It's more than only images. Mm -hmm. We get quantitative data. We get information from the electronic patient record. All this information needs to be integrated efficiently, and for that reason, we will need artificial intelligence. If we don't use it, then we will lose. Okay, excellent. Now, at ECR this week, you're very active as a speaker, as a moderator. Are there any sessions in particular, perhaps later in the week that you're looking forward to very much that you'd alert people to, to attend? Well, there's a, there's a whole uh, bunch of uh, lectures about artificial intelligence, uh, so those are certainly worth uh, uh, bringing a visit. Um, actually, I'm not um, giving a lecture about artificial intelligence as such, but about uh, the, the use of mobile devices in radiology, which is a hot topic as well. Okay, excellent. Uh, yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. So um, in, you're also vice president of USOMI. Are there any meetings coming up that you'd, you'd put people towards that you'd suggest they mark their diary with? Yes, absolutely. We are organizing a workshop, a hands-on workshop in April next uh, 21st in uh, Holland, in Nijmegen. And it's done in collaboration with the University of mm -hmm. Nijmegen. And we will show uh, uh, clinical applications that are already available for artificial intelligence. Excellent. So uh, this is a workshop where radiologists will be able to, to see how it works, how they can integrate it in their work to give them a, to give them a better feeling of uh, what's artificial intelligence able of doing at this moment and how can it help me? And I think this is very valuable. So yes, this is certainly uh, an activity worth a visit. And uh, then we have our, in October, we have our academy, which will be in Rotterdam as well, 27th of October. And yes, we are also working, but that's only in 2019. We are establishing a close collaboration with our American counterparts, which is the SIM, Society of Imaging Informatics in Medicine. And we will uh, organize a joint meeting in 2019, which will be kind of a, a unique event. Okay, well, best of luck with that. I hope thank the planning goes well and enjoy the Congress this week. Right. Eric, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Phil. This is Philip Ward signing off for Aunt Mini Europe.